Hi guys, welcome back to Seduce Me to the Demon War demo. Yuki here. We're gonna be doing James's route. I think it's this one. Alright, let's just get to it. Hopefully, it'll be good. And I already had my heart oh, in scrambles because of poor Damien, even though nothing's happened to him, but just the way he talks makes me feel so sad. But, anyways, let's go. Quinn and them are best at the moon of Ness. Oh, an angel. I wish to set a stone destiny. What the? The day that I'm sure they're more than Quinn. Because the fate of the Abyssal Plains is in the hands of the wrong man. I must set things right. Let him dish us. Set on this girl. I don't think that's Diana. Pretty sure it's not. I come bearing my life force as the price. Take as much as you desire, as long as my request is fulfilled. Could be... James's mom? I don't know yet. Then, that is the price. As long as you set the stone destiny. No fight. My name. My name is Yuki. I'd almost forgotten it. I clung to it by a single thread, knowing that if I let go I'd be lost in the dark void, never to return. Why? Why was I so worried about my name? Well, it was the only claim I had to reality, especially when I was behind bars. For some reason, I was in a cell. I didn't know why. I don't... I didn't know how I'd gotten here. All I knew was that I was in it and that I was chained to a wall by shackles on my ankles. I didn't want to accept the bars as real. I didn't want to be in a cell. I didn't want to smell the dank stench of blood and sweat emanating from all around me. But I had no choice in that matter. No matter how many times I examined my surroundings, they remained the same. I was in a cell in a dimly lit stone dungeon. The walls were unfriendly and the shackles around my ankles provided no comfort. The rags I was forced to wear barely fit and I felt filthy. Why was I here? I didn't have the answer. All I knew was that I was on that I was trapped. I could hear quiet sobbing and muffling sc muffled screaming from the further down the passageway I was in. They reverberated from down the hall and I knew that they must have come from fellow prisoners or the condemned. I, however, only had one neighbor. In the cell beside me sat a figure wrapped in a dark purple cloak. The top of the figure's head was shrouded by both the shadows in their cell and the hood that covered their face. They never spoke. They never moved. Were they dead? I watched them closely for some time, but I never saw their body inhale, exhale, or show any other sign of life. I didn't wish to think on it further, so I turned my head away. What was happening? I opened my mouth to shout, hoping that maybe someone would hear me and give me some sort of clue as to what was going on. As I tried to command my voice to speak, however, the sound of a large door opening echoed through the dungeon. I turned my head towards the direction of the sound and watched as the hall slowly began to brighten, like there was a torch moving towards my cell. I stared wide at what was approaching. Moving towards my cell was a man I recognized, one that had been close to my heart, and now I had a look of cold disdain in his eyes. My chest pounded as his name reverberated in my head. James. Huh. He was still in his human form, but his voice vibrated with demonic echoes and waves, sending shivers down my spine. His tone was cold and unfeeling, as if I was not someone he loved, but someone he despised with every ounce of his being. You still live. I'm surprised. Suddenly, the cell beside me. The cowled figure jumped up and slammed into the bars, gripping them as they snarled at James. I stared, now able to see who had been hidden by the cloak. You piece of filth! How can you dare show your face again? 
Diana? James seemed unfazed as he stepped towards Diana's cage and leaned in, almost nose to nose with her. And you live too. How resilient you both are. We're not so weak as to break under your chains, huh? Trey. After all, unlike you, I carry pure Lilith blood in my veins. In that human, the one you love. Okay, I guess the end. Mind. Sorry about that. What was Diana talking about? Why was James acting like this? I opened my mouth to speak, but felt something hold back my voice. It was as if a vice had been tightened over my vocal cords and denied that any chance to create sound in my throat. James smirked and gripped Di Diana's chin, making her snarl, snarl louder. Bleh. Anyone can be broken. It just takes time and patience, both of which I have in abundance. Well, that's sucky. I should probably tone down. Nah. Fucking mongrel! James tightened his grip on her chin, digging his fingers into her jaw. Diana could only wince and glare at the one holding her. I could feel fear run through my body as his lips curved into even more into a devilish smirk. How could he look so evil? I don't know. Be patient, woman. You'll have your turn soon enough. I got brainwashed. As James turned his gaze to me, I felt my body suddenly heat up. His eyes were glowing in almost sickly golden yellow as he stared into my soul and ignited my core with heat and desire. Or it could be something to do with that voice in the beginning, which could be his mom, which may be trying to make a deal with the angel, trying to get her son to be on top, but I don't know, that's just a guess. Be the leader. I felt dizzy and weak, my mouth falling open to allow a silent sigh escape from my lips. What was happening? No, stay away from me, James. James released Diana and walked to the door of my cell, quickly manipulating the lock to open it. As the door opened, I felt myself crawl backwards towards the back of the cell, suddenly afraid of the demon who was approaching. At the same time, I felt uncanny and natural elation for the man approaching me with the smirk that tore at my heart. Well, time to dine. Alright, I'm gonna have... Because of the implication, there's probably gonna be another warning at, at the beginning of the episode, because, yeah. DON'T YOU FUCKING TOUCH HER! Before I knew it, Diana pressed her body against the balls. Bars. Eh. Can't speak that divided our cells and grabbed James's shoulder, digging her nails into it. <laughs> you little... Oh no! In retaliation, James swung his arm towards Diana and formed a familiar pistol in his hand. Within moments, he aimed and fired. <laughs> I could only watch as Diana jumped back and held her chest blood oozing from between her fingers onto the ground. She stared at James in both pain and surprise before crumpling to the floor and exhaling the last breaths she would ever take. You know, this actually brings up something from like the last game about, I realize there was time constraints, but like, we witnessed him kill Malix, and that was that. We were like, alright, he did it, I understand he was doing it to protect me, but we never got into like, I guess, Because you basically watching someone kill someone is traumatizing, no matter like the situation. And well, in my opinion, so yeah, th this is probably gonna shed light on that a little more. She stared at James in both pain and surprise before crumbling to the floor and exhaling the last breath that she would ever take. 
My mind was caught in a frenzy of emotions. While I felt shocked, terrified, and mortified at what had happened, my body continued to dance in the desirable waves that ran through my body. Why couldn't I control myself? The pistol in James's hand disappeared as he let out a sneer of irritation. Damn it! James then looked at me, towering over me, and I both cowered in fear and melted against the back wall of my cell. Looks like you'll have to give me twice the amount of energy from now on. Mm. As James began to step towards me, I felt hot tears run down my cheeks while I panted like a dog in heat. Alright? I wanted to scream. I wanted to tell him not to hurt me. For some reason, I always go for the... Well, I don't even know how the other ones are like, so... I can't really compare. My voice began to press against the vice holding it, if wanting to explode out. James's shadow consumed me and I let out a scream. Then, I woke up. I shut up in my bed, panting wildly as my heart pounded hard against my ribcage. I gripped my hand over my chest, feeling my pulse be beating underneath the skin in a frantic rhythm in time with my hastened breath. I heard the faint echo of my scream bounce through the room as I let reality sink in. It was a dream, and I was awake now. Everything was okay. Everything was... What? My heart froze, and I felt my body tense up at the sound of James's voice beside me. My heated cheeks reminded me of the tears I had shed in the dream and who had caused them. I shot my head to the side to see James, the man whom I loved, but also the man who terrified me, looking at me with a face painted with concern and worry. Love, are you okay? Ah! Whoa! Get away from me! I couldn't control myself as I quickly rolled out of bed and pressed myself back against the far wall, staring at him in absolute terror. James only stared back at me, still shocked and now troubled. He didn't move, most likely not wanting to frighten me further. I feel kind of bad. The image of the dream I had began to replay in my head, replacing the James in bed with the James that towered over me in the dark jail cell. My body shook violently from this memory, but soon my logic began to break the images apart, leaving me with the sight of James still in bed, staring at me. My thoughts slowly melted and I felt myself start to cry once again. This time, my heart began to ache as I realized whom I had yelled at. I lurched forward and practically jumped at James, who opened his arms wide and wrapped me in them as I landed against his chest. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Shh. There's nothing to be sorry about. It was only a nightmare. I'm right here. James held me close to him as I began to cry into his shoulder. I continued to apologize to him, whimpering and sobbing like a child as the fear from the nightmare slowly began to fade away. James's hands simply ran over my head and hair, trying to calm me down. I had felt so real, and yet I knew that it couldn't have been. James was right here, protecting me and comforting me, proving the love he had for me. He would never hurt me. So we think. Ever. I eventually was able to calm down and look up, and I looked up at the man holding me as he gently smiled down at me. Are you alright? I nodded, earning a small squeeze of his arms around me. I naturally cuddled closer to his body, desiring more of his warmth. What time is it? I, James gently hugged me tighter to his body as he looked over to his nightstand at his phone, had his phone which was docked in a fancy speaker charger. It's 3.40 a.m. I figured it was around 3. We still had a few hours before our alarms were set to wake us. Crap, why did I have to have Nightmare and wake both of us up? I gripped James's shoulder and looked up at him apologetically. I'm sorry. I know you need your sleep. Please don't worry about it. My beautiful fiancé is much more important to me than sleep. As he said fiancé, I couldn't help but feel my face heat up, letting a blush run along my cheeks. It was true, I was his fiancé. He had asked me to marry him a couple of months ago, and I had accepted his proposal, wanting to be his wife. 
Just thinking about the idea of being with him forever made the ima imaginary butterflies in my stomach dance around happily and flare their wings against my heart. It was a dream come true. His love and warmth assured me that my nightmare was just that. He was my wonderful husband-to-be, and I was going to be his wife. My body couldn't help but shiver in happiness. James caught the shiver and gently ran his hands up and down my arms. Are you feeling cold? No. No. You just make me happy. That's all. As I leaned up and kissed James's cheek, he smiled and kissed mine in return. His warm lips sent another euphoric shiver down my spine and I felt joy run through my veins. I truly loved James. It wasn't long, however, before I felt something gently brush against my hip. I looked down as James cleared his throat in embarrassment. Alright. Raising an eyebrow as well as growing a blush on my face, I looked up at my fiancé. As he looked away from me, his face almost red as a tomato. I'm sorry, I can't exactly control my, well, my excitement when you say things like that. Uh... Um... As I said before, I usually took the pretty, uh, tame routes through my first playthroughs, so I guess I'll do the opposite this time and embarrass myself some more. Awesome. Okay. Kiss him passionately. James didn't have to use his power to light a fire in me. I gently tilted my head and kissed him, capturing his lips with mine lovingly. I felt my body slowly heat up, softly and tenderly, to make sure not to scare him. His enthrallment over me became a natural part of our lovemaking. It not only helped him gain energy, but it made the pleasure of our sex practically ten times more powerful. As I moaned against his lips, James gently ran his hands down my back and over my rear, making me slightly jump in surprise at the feel. As he gripped it, I let out another hot moan, and James smiled and chuckled quietly against my lips. I stared at the ceiling, lusting for James as he pulled away from the kiss and began to kiss over my neck. I absolutely needed this man and I needed him now. Meh. My body pressed against his and forced him back onto the bed, allowing me to be on top and be in control. James stared up at me, still gripping onto my ass and gently massaging his cheek with his fingers with a smirk. Okay. We both knew that he was always in control whenever we made love, however my rebellious attempts at being top often spurred him on to be that much rougher in our play. It was like a game. Still, I like to think that I tried valiantly and not in vain. I moved my hands back and took his off of me, lacing our fingers together and pinning them to the bed beside his head. They didn't fight back against my hold, but James's face continued to intimidate me with a playful smirk and a dominant gaze. I gently leaned down and captured his lips again, grinding my hips against his and showing him the heat and desire I was feeling for him. His hands tightened around mine and I felt gently I felt him gently grind back up into me and letting his own desire rub against mine. My body forced me to pull my lips away, making me bite my lower lip in pleasure at the grind before suddenly feeling myself being flipped over on the bed with James smirking over me. I didn't care. I wanted him to take me in whatever position we ended up in. Wrapping my arms around his waist, I pulled James close and leaned my head up, brushing my lips against his. What are you waiting for? Take me. <laughs> As you wish. God. Within more, mere moments, we went from grinding each other to moaning each other's names as we made passionate love. Our clothes were thrown about the room, but we didn't give a damn. We were busy. Every moment pushed moans and gasps from my lips, building towards a beautiful high as I moved against him and made him feel the same. Our sex wasn't just to feel pleasure. It was our bodies melding and moving together in perfect harmony with each one professing our love for each other. 
There wasn't a single moment of silence between us, letting our love echo through the room. As we were finally eclipsed in ecstasy for each other, we held each other tightly, not wanting to let go of one another. James had pulled up our covers over our bodies and I had made his chest my pillow. James ran his hands through my hair, his heated and worn out breath matching mine as we both fell back into the darkness of sleep. The nightmare didn't return. I slept peacefully within James's arms as if nothing else mattered in the world except for me and him. The morning was kind and James and I sweetly awakened from b before our alarms. Oddly, I felt well rested and ready for the day ahead. As I looked at James, who was still holding me, he opened his eyes slowly and smiled down at me. Good morning. Did you sleep better? I nodded, causing him to chuckle and kiss my forehead. My own lips curled up into a smile and his, as his lips touched my skin. I hugged him tighter, burying my head in his chest. Do we have to get up? Unfortunately, we do. You have to organize more wedding arrangements, and I have to go to work. Um. Do you have to? <laughs> yes, I do. Now come on, let's go. I couldn't help but whine. I wanted to stay with James in bed just a little longer. However, since he was the CEO of the Anderson Toys Company, he had many obligations to attend to. Not even a future wife could pull him away from his duties. As James sat up, he took me up in his arms and kissed me lovingly, making a smile grow back onto my cheeks. I couldn't be annoyed for long whenever he kissed me. We went downstairs and had breakfast together before James went to work. It was always depressing whenever he left me alone in the house. However, he was a CEO and I was currently still in school getting a degree. Luckily for me, all of my courses were online, so I didn't have to leave the house to get the degree I wanted. I could not do that. I have to be physically in that classroom four days out of the week to actually learn because I'd probably just goof off if I didn't. Um, attending classes in pajamas was way better than having to put on regular clothes. But I understand the, the need to just not want to go out in the cold weather outside. I stretched and yawned, still slightly tired from waking up in the middle of the night. As I thought about the moment, I couldn't stop images of my nightmare flashing through my mind. Quickly, I shook my head. Nope, nope, it was a stupid dream. No! Before that night, I had been having wonderful dreams of James and I preparing the wedding and eventually seeing each other at the church. He hadn't seen my dress, despite trying to, so he'd be stunned and I would be blushing and smelled from ear to ear. That one nightmare, however, worried me. What if it was an omen? A sign? I wrapped my arms around myself, feeling a cold wave of nerves rush against my skin. My first instinct was to call Naomi or Susa just to vent about it and get it out of my system, but if there was something supernatural at work, they wouldn't understand. Closing my eyes, I made a decision. I took my phone out of my pocket and dialed the number onto my phone without looking at it before bringing it up to my ear. Are we actually going to hear Naomi or Susie's voice? The other line rang a couple of times before I heard a voice answer at last. Hello? Sam! I guess he's my confidant now. Crap, I didn't know Sam was still sleeping. Oh! Who's Carrie? Sam, is Carrie awake? Dude, why are you calling? Sam, you dork! Give me the phone! I know it's her! Some... For some reason, this kind of makes me feel like... Eh. I'm feeling conflicted. Doofus, calm down. Mine. Haha! <laughs> Hello? I smiled. Carrie was Sam's wife. Yep, I said it. Wife. They had been married for almost a year, and despite sounding like they were always bickering half the time, they truly loved each other. Sam had met her while investigating a haunted house. She had been there as an 
architectural consultant and they clicked as soon as they both left. What was even more surprising about their friendship, however, was that Carrie knew what he was before he even confessed it to her. Apparently she was a witch. I was gonna say, she's a witch, but then that would have sounded offensive, but then I guess it's not now. A person who had been granted permission to know about magic and otherworldly creatures by the angels and was gifted with both demon and holy magic. I only got to know about otherworldly creatures because I was in a relationship with one and was marrying him. Hey Carrie, are you free right now? I feel like we're kind of betraying our own friends. It's like, they're just pushed off to the side, like whatever, don't care about them. Huh? Well, I kind of just got out of bed, but let me check my schedule, okay? Huh? Did they just Give hear me that? Wait, let me check. I think that was my Facebook. No. <laughs> I heard Carrie climb over Sam at one point, making him swear at her before he groaned in defeat at the situation. After a couple of book flips from the other line, Carrie finally cheered. I don't have anything scheduled for work today, so I'm all free. What do you need? Wedding advice? No, no, not that. Mind coming over? I kind of want to ask you something. Sure thing. Sam's got work today. It'll just be me. I'll even bring some pizza and stuff so we can have a fun girls' lunch. What do you say? Sounds great! See you soon! The phone call ended and I let out a sigh. This would be good for me. Carrie might be able to help clear things up. I decided to clean as I waited. The mansion was huge after all and it never stopped collecting dust. Soon enough, however, Carrie came by with two pizza boxes in one hand and a large bottle of pop in the other. I couldn't help but feel my stomach gurgle at the delicious smell. She brought deep dish pizza. Yum! Oh, she's pretty. She settled into my room and made my bed into our picnic area. We laid out a blanket so we didn't get crumbs on the bed itself, but we liked our makeshift eating spot. So, what's going on? Are you having premarital trouble? No, no, it's not about our marriage. Well, Carrie tilted her head at me, wondering what was the matter. I began to doubt myself. Should I tell her about the nightmare? Maybe it really was just a bad dream and I was overthinking it. I closed my eyes thinking about what to say. Eventually, I finally spoke up. You know what? Just be honest. There's no point in hiding anything from her. She, she seems like a good person. Uh, I had a nightmare last night. A nightmare? Was it really bad? I nodded, remembering how horrified I was in the nightmare and visibly shivering at the memory. Carrie frowned and poured me a glass of pop. Maybe I should have brought alcohol. I was just thinking that, but I don't drink. <laughs> oh no, no, it wasn't that bad. Terrible, I swear. I rubbed the back of my neck, trying to relax. I had to relax. It was just a nightmare, nothing real. I should have been able to talk about it. I sighed and looked up at Carrie. It was about James. He... Why, why would I lie? I need a... If I'm going to have a consultant, I better well, might as well be, like, completely honest. There's no point of me hiding this. It was holding me in a jail cell. Carrie stared wide out at me, unsure of what to say. I continued. He looked cold and evil. Diana was there, too. Diana? The succubus that tried to take the boys away? Yeah, she was in the cell next to me, but for some reason it seemed like she was trying to protect me. Protect you? How? My mind instantly replayed that nightmare, flashing to when Diana gripped James's shoulder and tried to pull him away from me. I couldn't help my body from wincing at the memory of her being shot by his gun. He came into my cell. He enthralled me, and Diana shouted at him to leave me alone. And then he... Carrie reached over and placed her hand on my shoulder, making me lower my head. It was strange to think that Diana was protecting me. Yet I could feel the anger in her voice when James tried to approach me. She was truly sounded like she had wanted to protect me. 
He shot her with his demon gun, and when she died, he came after me. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. I may not have been... It may not have been real, but my body couldn't help but quake in fear when you're calling the nightmare. I shook my head and looked at Carrie, needing to know what was going on. Do you think this is an omen? This nightmare can't be just a dream. I gotta save this because I'm, I'm probably only gonna be able to record like half of this and come back to it later because I got stuff to do today. <laughs> Such is the life of school stuff. But I really do want to check my Facebook. Eh. How long have I been recording? For 25 minutes. I'll stop around 35 minutes. Carrie ran her hands through her hair and stared at the blanket beneath us. She bit her lower lip as she contemplated, which made me worried. You said a jail cell? Yeah, it was a stone dungeon. Like in a medieval castle? Yeah. Carrie shook her head again and ran her hands through her hair once more before looking up at me. I don't know if this is connected with that dream, but I've heard rumors about the Abyssal Plains being in utter chaos. What? Uh, what do you mean? I don't know what's happening exactly, but for the past two years, the demon world has been emitting some really bad energy. Even the angels are taking note of what's happening. They're even neglecting their duties to go to the demon world themselves. Hmm. That threw me off. According to Carrie, angels were extremely devoted to watching over the human world. They would never skimp duties to even think about the demon world. Carrie shook her head. The only place I can imagine jail cells like that being used for prisoners is in the Abyssal Plains. But you and James are here in the human world, so it makes no sense. Carrie abruptly moved from the bed and reached for her purse, digging through it and practically sticking her entire arm into it. I swore she was Mary Poppins the day I saw her do that for the first time. Like from like Halloween Town and the grandma and, and her bag that followed her around. Yeah. Apparently it was the demon branded bag called the Endless Satchel, only found in the demon black market of the human world. It wasn't just a bag on the inside, it was a void. You could stuff anything in there and be able to pull it back out with an ease as long as you pictured it in your mind. Carrie pulled out something wrapped in a dark green silk. As she unfolded the silk the cloth, she revealed the deck of the cards. <clears throat> on the back of each card was a black pentagram with small, almost unreadable markings around it. On the faces, however, were different hand painting images that helped me recognize it was a tarot deck. They were worn, but they still emitted a power that made a shiver run through my spine. It's been a while since I've used this, but it might be able to shed some light on the situation. I watched as Carrie held the deck against her chest and closed her eyes, muttering to herself. She then lifted the deck to her lips and kissed over the top card before shuffling it. The cards practically danced and glided between her fingers as if they were alive when she shuffled them in her hands. Eventually she stopped and the deck settled together in her grip. Oh. Am I gonna have to choose? She gently drew three cards from the top of the deck, setting them face down in front of her, and placed the remainder of the deck in the nightstand. She flipped over one, revealing a wheel with multiple symbols on it. As I stared at the card, the wheel seemed to spin on the face of the card, making me slightly dizzy. Carrie mumbled to herself as she examined the card. The Wheel of Fortune? Could this be about the demon world changing? N no, it can't just be that. Someone changed something in the past and disturbed the fate of the Abyssal Plains. Mm. I looked at the card, taking note of what Carrie said aloud. There were many things that I knew that I had personally changed. I wasn't destined to get the Anderson Toys Company. I met the boys and learned about magic, and I was going through a big change in my life with my upcoming marriage. 
Carrie moved her hand and flipped over another card, revealing a figure with a sword in one hand and a scale in the other. Staring at the card, I swore I heard angry whispers in the air around me. Justice? What could this be about? Could the change in the past be something so big that it demands Justice's attention? Huh. My mom began to replay every choice I made in my life and fast forward. My decision to let the boys stay, to defend the boys against Malik's, to stand up to Daddy, bleh, Diana, everything rolled past my thoughts. Was one of these decisions one I shouldn't have made? Nah, just mother-in-law doesn't like us very much. Probably. I didn't get to think on it long as Carrie flipped over the third car as it was revealed both Carrie and I gasped. Is it death? Is it death? The King of Swords? But that card is not supposed to look like that. Is that James? A king figure sat on the throne with the large sword in his hand, as if he was ready to attack the viewer. However, the card looked like a black and gold demon I recognized. James? The picture, despite my being simple, was powerful enough to make a shudder run through my body at the sight. As we stared, however, the nightstand that held the remaining cards began to quake, forcing me and Carrie to look over in surprise. What the? The tarot cards, on their own, burst upwards and began to fly through the air frantically. The sound of battle and war emanated from them and raged through them the room, and Carrie quickly moved to shield my body with hers as she covered her ears. I covered mine as well, but that didn't stop the sound of blood and clashing swords from digging into my senses. I could almost feel the heat and danger of the image of war that the sound was painting against my skin. As the sound stopped, I looked up to see the cards float down onto, the, onto us, now lifeless and all of them torn in half right down the middle. As they landed, however, I stared in shock at what I saw on each half card's face. Carrie looked up and gasped as well. Impossible. Trying to break us apart. Yeah. On half the cards, I saw a girl that had my hairstyle, with streams of tears running down her face, reaching out towards the torn edge. On the other, I saw a weeping boy with James's demon horns and a crown on his head. He was reaching back towards the tear that divided him from the other half of the card where the girl was. My heart practically stopped. Was this really happening? I couldn't believe my eyes as I stared at the cards in front of me. My nightmare was beginning to flash before my eyes, causing me to grip onto myself and shiver violently from the fear bubbling in my core. Carrie quickly grabbed hold of me and hugged me to her. Hey, 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 shh. It's okay. It's okay. Sometimes the cards are wrong. This can't be right. How could I believe her? I was staring at multiple torn cards showing me the exact same message. I gripped to Carrie, feeling extreme fear and sadness run through my body. Hey. Hey. Look at me. I looked up at Carrie. She gave me a small smile as she squeezed me gently into her hug. Magic is fickle, okay? The cards aren't always correct. Fate can always be changed. Remember that. Yeah, but as I said before, his mom does not want him to be with me, which is why she's, she made a deal with the angel thing in exchange for her powers, which will... I don't know what's going to happen after that. I knew she was trying to make me feel better. I knew that there was something going on. However, as the thought of my marriage came up, I knew that I had had to calm down eventually. There were cards and my marriage was still happening, regardless of what they said. I closed my eyes and slowly started to ignore the signs. <laughs> Excuse me. And the cards, and the nightmare on my head. This wouldn't help me and I had to prepare for my wedding. Carrie muttered an incantation under her breath, and when I opened my eyes, the cards had all disappeared. I hugged Carrie tighter, silently thanking her for removing them. I had to be stronger. I had to. As the day went on, I enlisted Carrie to help me with wedding arrangements. Surprisingly, when a majority of the week 
work needed. We got a majority of the work needed done, so that gave us some time to relax and watch a movie together before James returned from work. And I guess we're probably not going to tell him about that, even though it it's best to speak with your partner if you're having troubles. But what do I know? I have no experience. Wanting to leave us alone, Carrie left as soon as he came. Hey, did everything go all right? I'm assuming Carrie helped. Yes. Yes, she did. For some reason, I felt the need to hug him. I just needed to. Without warning, I walked over and wrapped my arms around James, laying my head against his chest. Huh? Love? That's that's a nice pet name. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> As James wrapped his arms around me and kissed the top of my head, I smiled. He would be with me, and I would be okay. I love you. I love you, too. My heart felt at ease. Everything would be fine. Everything would be okay. James looked down at me, pulling away slightly to see my face with a smile. So, what would you like for dinner? We can go out to eat, or we can stay at home and I can make something. I held ha James's hand in mine, knowing that I wanted to just stay home with him. We had more than enough for the wedding, yes, but our time together was better spent alone together rather at than at a restaurant. How about we order food instead? You just came back from work. Might as well relax. James chuckled softly before kissing my cheek, making me giggle softly. As my wonderful bride wishes. Mm, let's see. I'm going to stop here for right now. I'm not... But you won't know that because... Do the magic of editing. Okay. See you when I get back. I'm back. <laughs> Alright, where did we leave off? Here. We ordered takeout and sat together in our room, once again making the bed in a picnic area. We played a movie in the background, but our focus was on each other. He made himself comfy without a shirt and made myself comfy with my head against his shoulder. So, is everything alright? I made sure the reception hall was taken care of on my way back, so that should be in order. Oh, wow. Good thing. Good, thank you. Um, yeah, everything's in order. We'll have a perfect wedding. Was there anything you wanted to add to the wedding? It's not too late to include anything you like, if you really want it. Well, that's nice. Um... No, I don't think so. I think everything we have is good. James nodded before continuing to eat. I, however, stopped and stared at James. I was really going to get married to him. It was strange to imagine that I was really about to swear my life to someone for all time. It was like a dream come true. Why would I ever let something stupid like a nightmare shake me from it? Screw the nightmare. I was going to live a dream. I gently moved my food to the nightstand and placed a hand under James's plate, making him stopped to look up at me. I softly pulled it away from him, placing his food next to mine, before crawling over James and sitting over his lap. <laughs> Promise me something? Do -do 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 -do. Oops. Promise to stay with me forever? It seemed like a simple and obvious promise, but I wanted to hear him profess it. James continued to look up at me, silently understanding my need to hear it, and wrapped his arms around my body. I promise to stay with you forever. Until the end? Until the end of time. You can't break up your promise to me, ever. I would never dream of it. Mm, I'm pretty sure that something's gonna happen. If it's anything like the other dream about Damien sacrificing himself, that's a really big possibility. Alright. James moved a hand up and tenderly caressed my cheek, making me nuzzle into his hand and close my eyes. You are the one I want to spend my entire life with. 
I will give everything and more to you for as long as I possibly can as your husband. I felt tears slowly run down my cheeks, which was soon brushed away by James's thumb. I nestled further into James's hand and held his wrist, almost hugging his arm to my chest. Is the nightmare you had last night bothering you? I couldn't help but nod in reply, frowning and biting my lower lip. I didn't want it to bother me. It wasn't worth it. I knew that James would stay with me and would never hurt me. James gently wrapped his free arm around my back and pulled me against his chest, moving his head to nuzzle my other cheek com comfortingly. Do you want to tell me what happened, or will you be okay? I could- I moved to wrap my arms around James. I wasn't sure if I wanted to tell him at all. Well... I don't know. It's better to be honest. Tell him. I gently pulled away from him to look into his eyes. I had to tell him. It was about him after all. I... I was in a dungeon. I was there with Diana. Diana? Did she try to hurt you? No. Actually, she was trying to protect me. From who? Mmm... -hmm. You. James stared at surprise at me, but remained silent as I continued. You came in and thrilled me, but it wasn't like you usually do it. It was forceful, and I didn't want it. But I was under your control. Diana tried to stop you, but you shot her. And then, you came for me. For some reason, no weight was lifted from my shoulders. It was a terrible dream, but James deserved to know. As I finished recounting the nightmare, James gently moved his hands up and cupped my face in them. Thank you for telling me, and I'm sorry that you experienced that kind of nightmare. But I swear to you that I will never hurt you. I let myself become lost in his amber eyes, believing every single word he said. I could feel the love and care in his voice and his warm hands assured me that he would protect me from harm. <clears throat> I wrapped my arms once again around James and let my head rest on his shoulder. Oh man, my voice is going away. <clears throat> As his arms wrapped, arms encircled my form. I loved him. He loved me. We would protect and love each other forever. Soon enough, the wedding day had come. I had received many pre-wedding gifts from guests that couldn't come, but I knew many people would still be at the wedding, since James was the Anderson Toy Company CEO. I even got fun texts from Naomi, Suzu, and Carrie as they tried to tease me with pictures of James and his wedding tux, but I deleted them without peeking. I didn't want to see him yet. He didn't get to see me see my wedding dress, so I wanted to wait to see him in his tux. Alas, I had to decide the, to dress alone at the mansion. The girls had offered to help, but I needed the time to myself. I had to reflect on the day ahead. I was about to be married. It was insane. I couldn't stop staring at myself in the mirror, dressed in the wedding dress of my dream. Is this really happening? I knew the air wouldn't answer me, but I felt myself need to speak my thoughts aloud. I could hardly believe that I was going to walk out of the house and be someone's wife. James's wife. The thought of us together made me smile and close my eyes. Huh? No. A voice that didn't know scent shivers up and down my spine. I suddenly looked around, hearing the voice echo in the room. No, I don't want to be baptized. What? What was going on? Why was I hearing voices? This couldn't be happening. I held my head, trying to stop the sounds in case I was dreaming or imagining them. Stop! And I can't really scream it out because it's the middle of the morning. Okay. I screamed at the voices, not knowing what were they were saying to me, but wanting them to go away. What I didn't realize was that my screams let out some sort of spell that seemed to freeze the air around me. Everything was still and silent. I could feel, however, that the room was around me was frozen in time. I knew it! I knew it! That girl has demon magic! What the? Then quit talking and let's take her! The Demon Lord will be so pleased. Who? 
Before I could turn to search for the voices, I felt hands grab hold of my feet, and I looked down and lifted my dress. Two pairs of evil-looking hands had taken hold of my ankles, reaching through a dark red and purple pentagram. I shrieked, trying to pull my legs away, but couldn't stop them from swiftly, as they swiftly pulled me into the ground. I was pulled deeper into the darkness. I was no longer in my room. I was being dragged through a dark void, one that I couldn't escape. I reached out and clawed at the dark, trying to find something to grab onto. I tried to pull my legs away from the hands that were holding me, but I couldn't pull free. What was going on? Why was this happening? Someone help me! As if someone heard my screams, I suddenly felt the hands let go and disappear, leaving me to float into the darkness they left me in. I shut my eyes, feeling this, please let this be a dream, please let this be a dream. I finally felt a surface under my feet and I collapsed onto it, my body curling in on itself from the experience I had. I didn't dare tear my eyes away from my lap, not ready to get up just yet. The voice I heard, however, made my heart stop. You! What are you doing here? I looked up, finally having the courage to take in my surroundings. My heart stopped beating for a moment, seizing in my chest. I looked up to see five figures, strangers, monsters, beings that I didn't recognize. They all looked down at me in surprise as if I had dropped in a very bad time. One man looked like an orc from a fantasy game without the tusks. He had broken horns and a very frightening aura around him as he stared at me. The other male was lanky in comparison, more human-like, but I could almost feel the power emanating from him regardless. One of the women who was staring at me had rabbit ears. Rabbit ears. They twitched on top of her head as she looked at me and gripped her staff. She seemed harmless, yet she had animal ears. The one creature that I couldn't discern the sex of seemed more excited to see me than surprised. What freaked me out about them was that they had wings sticking out of their back and they were floating. The last woman, however, set off alarm bells in my head as I looked at her surprised face. Her hair, her eyes, D Diana. As I, as she stared, the woman turned her body towards me in recognition in the name I had called her. It was her. What are you doing here? Diana walked towards me and stared down at me. It was odd. She didn't look like a human, yet I wasn't afraid of her demon form as she towered over me. I was more in shock as to what was going on. Before Diana could speak further, most likely to repeat herself, a figure quickly stepped up and bowed to her, kneeling beside me. My lady, please forgive me. I felt something moving between our worlds and assumed the Demon Lord was to blame, so I intercepted his summoning of this human. You! So I wasn't the only one who felt the change in the air. Diana stared at the man kneeling beside me as I kept my eyes up at her. As she turned her gaze back to me, I gulped silently. What was she going to do with me? This all felt wrong. I was about to be married. I was about to live my happily ever after with the man I loved. Now it wasn't a place I didn't know with Diana and a bunch of creatures I didn't recognize. My instinct was to... Uh... I'll just cry. This wasn't happening. This couldn't have been happening. No way. I felt tears build up in my eyes, and I lowered my, them to look at the floor in front of me. As my gaze fell, my lungs began to seize hard, forcing me to hiccup in sadness. Uh, um, uh. I couldn't help it. I began to cry profusely. Why was this happening? Why was I here? If there was another nightmare, I wanted to wake up immediately. This wasn't right. I covered my face and cried into my hands, curling over myself as I let sadness run through my entire body. Please let me wake up. Please. As I felt warmth suddenly spread through my body, I slowly stopped and felt fresh air rush into my lungs. <clears throat> my, what was that? What was happening? I recognize this warmth. I looked up to see Diana kneeling down with a very concerned look on her face. Her visible eye glowing a warm gold color as she stared at me. Was she enthralling me? I didn't feel aroused like I usually feel whenever I was enthralled, but I felt calm and almost mellow. Calm down. Diana's voice 
seemed almost soothing, like a lullaby. However, I wasn't sleepy, I just felt quiet. The worry I had in my mind was gone. The sadness, gone. Diana must have done something to make sure I wouldn't cry. I didn't know whether to thank her or be afraid. Now, can you tell me what happened? Take your time and try to remember everything. Succubus, we have no time for- Shh! Let her do her thing! The human obviously knows her. And she obviously needs help. Poor thing. Why did she call her... Diana, though? That must have been the human name she used while she was in the human world. Smart. All of you, please! <laughs> Silence engulfed the room as Diana looked at the four be beings behind her. She then turned back to me and held out her hand, ushering me to take it. Can you stand? I nodded and took her hand, standing up at last. I looked around at the other beings in the room. They all kept their gaze to me, unsure of what I would do or say. Diana, however, led the conversation. First, can you tell me what happened to you? <laughs> I took a breath, recounting everything that happened. I was about to go into church to be buried, and then... I was attacked by this darkness. A couple of hands grabbed my legs and pulled me into it, and then I fell here. A shadow summoning. Diana turned to one of the beings, the lanky male, and glared. One of yours couldn't have. On my honor, it wasn't any of mine. We have nothing to gain from kidnapping a human. Nor do we know who this woman is, anyhow. My lady, if I may, I clearly remember hearing imp demons in the void along with her. It must have been the demon lord's henchman. <sighs> Those damnable creatures. That explains it. Diana crossed her arms and looked at me again. Well, dear, it seems that you were to be either a new harem girl for the demon lord to ravish, or bait for the boys to return to their father's side. Either way, I doubt you would have lived long had the demon lord gotten his hands on you. A violent shiver ran up my spine. Was it true? I would have died? Wait a minute. This girl knows about the demon lord's heirs? Yes. Hilariously enough, she was set to marry one of them, as you can see from her garb. As Diana motioned towards my dress, I realized how vulnerable I was and felt extremely self-conscious. I wrapped my arms around myself as Diana let out a sigh. Well, since you do not belong here, the obvious thing to do is to send you home. I couldn't help but stare wide-eyed at Diana. She was really going to send me home? Really? I couldn't believe my ears. You will... Really sent me back? Of course. It should be easy to do once everything is in order. It'll be like you never left the human world. Wait, like I never left the human world? What do you mean by left the human world? Before Di Diana stared, before she chuckling softly and gesturing to the room and beings within it. Dear, do you not realize where you are? You are in the demon world. My mind went blank. Couldn't be. I couldn't be in the demon world. No way. No way in hell. I felt myself back up against the wall behind me, suddenly afraid. I was in another world? How? That was impossible. Diana stepped towards me, both of her hands softly trying to show me she meant no harm as she positioned them in front of her hand. Do Bye. not panic. We will send you back now, so there's nothing to worry about. How will you power the spell? Bringing someone here is no easy task, but sending someone back consumes much more energy. I'll use what energy I have now and rest. We can organize the siege another time when I fully recover. It's not like the Demon Lord can escape the corner we've trapped him in, so we do have some time to spare. You'd waste time and energy on this human. We must strike now while the Demon Lord is weakened. But the human doesn't belong here. She needs to go home. Shall I prepare the return spell? Do. I grant you permission to use my energy to power the spell. With a nod, the lanky male man held out his hand towards the wall. I looked over the direction it was aimed at. Diana's shadow? I watched as Diana's shadow simply stood against the wall, mirroring the movement of the real succubus in the room. Before my eyes, the shadow began to morph and expand in the wall. On its own. 
I looked back to see Diana, to see her wrapping her arms around herself and curling her shoulders over as if she was in pain. Her nails embedded themselves into her forearms, and I could barely make out a painful hiss escaping, escaping her clenched teeth. Was this spell hurting her that badly? I turned back to the wall to see Diana's shadow shaken and vibrating as if it was resisting the change the man was forcing on it. You will obey my command. Open the gates to the void and allow passage to the world we seek. Transitum per Renan petto tranibris. Ubia periut. Ianoeum. Desedium. Upon Diana's final word, her shadow burst and expanded into the oval shaped doorway. I stared wide at the passage before a hand placed itself on my shoulder, forcing me to look over. The one with the spear gently pressed my shoulder forward and looked down at me with an almost a stern face. You must leave now. The faster you leave, the quicker we can close the void. Go! Go! Go get married! I quickly nodded and lifted the bottom of my dress, stepping forward to make a run for the passageway. However, before I, I could bolt towards my freedom, a snarl echoed through the room. How dare you interfere with my summoning! <laughs> At the very moment, Diana began to scream, arcing her spine and throwing her head back. Around her body were red tinted bolts of lightning flashing and shocking her form. No! Human! Use the passage! Now! He didn't have to tell me twice. I bolted towards the portal, diving forward as I neared it, but I was forced back by a burst of energy and a flash of red light. I fell to the floor, almost slamming my head into the stone. <laughs> a human will never, ever leave this world alive! You spineless worm! Close the portal! The demon lord might get through! But the human... Close it! <laughs> As the commanded, as commanded, the man pulled his hand back, visually forcing his arm back behind his body, and Diana's shadow slowly, quickly began to morph back into a simple shadow. The electricity around Diana faded away, and she began to tip forward. The man with the spear dropped his weapon and caught Diana in his arms, cradling her to his body as she panted and gasped for air. I don't sense the demon lord anywhere. The worm has to scurry through the shadows to try and fight back. He'll be dead soon enough. How is she, guard? Diana seemed to be... look uninjured, but her body was twitching from the aftermath of the magical attack. Her visible eye was shut tight and she dug her fingers into her... the guard's jacket to cling to him. As her eye opened, I saw not a bloody... blood ruby red color, but I saw a cold and a friendly golden color painted over her iris. Her mouth opened as she panted for air, and I could see hunger in her facial expression. But she continued to stare at the wall, not wanting to make eye contact with anyone. There are no physical wounds, but she's been weakened. I must give her my energy so she can recover. The man swiftly moved and hooked an arm underneath Diana's knees, lifting her up bridal style as she clung to his jacket, shivering. The spear that had fallen to the floor faded into black and purple mist as he quickly left the room with her in, her arm, in his arms. My mind, however, began to panic. I couldn't go home? Why was I being forced to stay? Damn the Demon Lord, this wasn't right! There's an imp in the castle. That is the only way the Demon Lord could have been able to interfere. You! Guards by the door! Hunt it down! As a pair of guards... A pair of guards that were apparently by the door saluted the one commanding them and ran off. I fell out of place, alone, terrified as of what to, was going to happen. The demon lord wanted me here and his word pounded at my mind. How was I going to get home? Would I ever be able to go home? Hey. I looked up to see the winged person hovering near me before they moved and sat on their knees in the stone ground beside me. We'll get you home, okay? Um... Diana just needs a little rest, okay? She needs more than rest. She needs to use a different spell to send her back. The Demon Lord will expect her to use the Shadow Spell again. How about the normal way? I'm sure we can connect to a witch or even the warlock she used before to reopen a portal to the human world. The warlock she used to get to the human world died, remember? And he was the most powerful warlock in the human world. Practically.
practically a god himself. What other human could be used to open a portal without another human dying? It was merely a suggestion. The faster we get this human home, the faster we can move on and finish off the Demon Lord. Well, what are we going to do with the human now? We can give her a room to rest in. Humans need sleep after all. Maybe by the time she wakes up, we'll think of a solution. Come. The one with rabbit ears looked down at me and lowered her hand at me, inviting me to take it. She had a kind but concerned expression on her face, so I trusted her. I slowly took her hand and began to stand up as the fairy figure brushed off the small patches of dust that had accumulated on my dress. I couldn't do anything. I was forced to listen to the beings around me because there was nothing else I could do. Without them, I couldn't get home. My heart ached, but I had to accept my predicament. Here, I'll bring you to the open ambassador's room. You are free to rest there for now. Okay. I was let out of the room and into the hall. I kept my eyes down, trying to take in more of the situation I was in. I was trapped in the demon world and Diana was out of commission. The demon lord had plans for me, but what exactly was he aiming for? I could not- I could have been bait. I could have been revenge. I didn't know, nor could I figure it out now. At least I was safe. At least I hope I was safe. The woman led me to a room that practically screamed medieval fantasy. Everything was clean, but it still had that old age feel, as if no one had ever stepped foot in the room until that moment. Rest here for now. When Diana is well again, we can discuss what to do. Thank you. I nodded to the woman before she gently curtsied and left, closing the door behind her. I took a moment to observe my surroundings, interested in understanding the aesthetic. This was fantasy turned into reality. It was like I had come back in time. Why though? Was the demon world really that behind in the times? Or did magic supersede technology that was... that, And this was the result? Despite the situation I was in, which was beyond heartbreaking and terrible, my curiosity began to fester in my mind as I was given a golden opportunity to learn something new. However, my thoughts began to drift and I felt myself becoming weak and dizzy. No doubt from the shock and trauma I had gone through. I stumbled towards the bed, needing to sit down and let everything settle in without passing out. As my rear hit the mattress, however, I let out a small pleasured sigh. Holy crap, this is a comfy mattress. I felt myself fall back and my entire body simply melted into the softness beneath my body. It was like I was sleeping on a cloud. Was that possible? Demon magic may have been something to do with it. But I was certain that I was drifting into an almost a blissful sleep just by lying on the blankets and mattress. Not caring that I was still in my dress, I closed my eyes and drifted to sleep. I needed the rest, since Diana wouldn't be available for a while anyway. Darkness surrounded my mind, my dreams remaining silent and hushed in a cool and calm black. No nightmares appeared and no sounds were made. I was simply resting and that was all my body needed. I let my thoughts wander in my subconscious, thinking about what was going to happen now. What will the boys do when they realize I'm gone? What will he do? I imagined him finding a way through the demon world and pulling me back to where I belonged, wrapping, his arms, wrapping me in his arms and swearing never to let me go. I would be relieved and would be married just as we planned. How unrealistic was that? I had to be realistic right now. And I was stuck, and the only one who seemed to be able to send me back was Diana and her companions, whoever they were. I had to trust them, whether I liked it or not. Eventually, I did rise from my sleep, somehow fully refreshed and calm. How could that have been? Did you have a good rest? I turned my head to see Diana at the door, arms crossed and leaning against the door's archway. She had a look of concern and pure curiosity on her face as she awaited my answer. Yes. Good. A good rest is always important, especially to humans. What about demons? We rest as well, but it's not sleep like you humans do. We simply rest with our eyes open. Why? It's easier to avoid getting killed when your eyes are open. 
I gulped. Were demons really that paranoid, or were they paranoid for a reason? Kaeda shook her head and stopped, stepped into the room, closing the door behind her. So we need to find another way to get you back to the human world. It won't be easy, but I believe it can be done by tonight, at the latest. Tonight? Really? Diana nodded and crossed her arms again, leaning on one hip. It will take time to get our shadow agents to gather the necessary supplies, but they are not hard to obtain, being that we are in a position of power. You must be lucky. What do you mean? <sighs> Diana sighed before casting a short spell under her breath. In front of me appeared a floating map, almost like a hologram. It showed an entire world with mountains, plains, and forests, and it was all surrounded by sea and water. Diana pointed at a marker that had a purple banner at its tip. It was marked in the center of some mountain and forest area. It was also the very center of the map. That is where we are currently, the center of the abyssal plains. Diana then ran her finger in a circle around the marker, showing a perimeter around it. Everything we need for the spell is within this area. It will just take time to gather the materials and prepare it. I nodded, understanding the situation. I was going to be... I was going to hopefully be able to go home tonight, which is better than not going home at all. So, what should I do until then? My suggestion? Stay in this room. I can mark this room as off-limits so that no demon may enter that would confuse you for an intruder and kill you. I gulped. I did not want to die. As Diana made the magical map disappear, she shrugged. However, I cannot stop you from whatever you wish to do. Just don't leave the castle. Alright. I nodded as she turned to leave. As she, as she stepped out, Diana looked back to me with a reassuring look. We'll get you back to the human world. I promise you that. Finally, she left me, a room, left the, left me alone in the room. I let out a small sigh and looked up at the ceiling. I had to wait until tonight to actually do anything. What was I going to do? Part of me agreed that with Diana's suggestion, wanting to stay in the room and be safe in case the guards didn't know who I was and would kill me on sight. My curiosity, however, wouldn't leave me alone and wanted me to explore the castle. I was handed an opportunity to explore a castle in the demon world, and part of me did not want it to go to waste. I was torn on what to do. Explore? There is no way I was letting this chance pass me by. I stood and walked towards the door, opening it a crack and looking around. There was no one in the hall, but there were two directions to go. Which way? Right. I went with the right. I closed the door behind me as I exited my room and began to make my way down the right corridor. Everything was definitely medieval style, and I felt a bit small in the hall. It was like in a fairy tale, walking around in a wedding dress. It felt almost dreamlike. The passage seemed long, decorated with wall candles, paintings, and random curtains and flowers. It was mystical to see, and I smiled. As I approached another fork in the hallway, however, I sighed. Really? How does anyone find their way around? I looked back, knowing I hadn't walked far from my room. I could turn back. Yet... Left. I was heading right, so I decided to try the opposite direction this time around. I turned left and headed down the hall, greeted by more fantastical decor. The hallways began to almost drive me nuts. I found myself going upstairs, then downstairs, and went up in a four-way corridor. Where have I landed myself? I became frustrated. Maybe giving in to my curiosity was a bad idea. However, the sound of an argument traveled through the air and caught my attention. And you brought me this. Why? Sir, the rebel queen demanded it be brought here along with the other materials. The flower is not important to the ritual. Throw it away or something. That's why it didn't work. It's your fault. But, sir... I don't want to hear it! Get out! From a nearby door, a man dressed in a dark cloak holding a white lily, like flower, practically ran out. He left the door ajar, but let out a sigh before turning to walk away, not noticing me. What the... I walked over and peeked in, seeing that... 
The room was a library. It was huge, and the middle of it, by a table covered in books, was the lanky man who cast the shadow spell before. I know you are there, human. Uh... How did he know? What? Was he able to smell me or something? The man turned to look at me from over his shoulder. Please don't just stand there. If you wish to come in, then come in. I'm not fond of people peeking into doorways. I immediately stepped into the room, not wanting to be rude. The man turned towards me and crossed his arms, taking in my full form. Well, what may I help you with? Huh? Oh, I was just wandering around. I didn't mean to intrude on anything. You needn't. You'll be returned to the human world soon enough. I bit my lip. He was right. I really didn't need to wander around if I was never going to return. Still, my curiosity was pulling me to explore the castle, and there I was in a library. Well, I simply wanted to see more of the place I happened to land in. I see. And have you found anything of interest in your little exploration? I found this library, didn't I? That you have. The man turned back to the table as I took a moment to look around. There were so many books, it was almost dizzying to peer at all of them. Uh, how much information was stored there? The man glanced at me as he continued to work on whatever he was focusing on. I'm curious about something, human. Since you're here, you can answer this. I turned back to the man as he straightened up and faced me once again. Are you well versed in war? Excuse me? That came out of nowhere. Why would he expect a woman in a wedding dress to, come to know about war? No, I can't say that I am. Humans tend to try and stay out of war. Truly? I'm surprised. I've heard that your world is ruled by multiple leaders and beliefs. How are you not constantly at war? From the tone of his voice, it almost sounded like he was mocking me. Did he think little of humans? I glared. We try and maintain peace because we all know we're different. We don't always agree on things, but we all mostly agree that war is bad, so we avoid it. The man took one more to look up and down my floor, most likely searching for some physical signs that I was lying or exaggerating. When he seemed to notice that I wasn't, he rubbed his chin gently as he leaned back against the table behind him. Humans are such interesting creatures. You have your own societies and countries, ruled by presidents and governments. You are ununited. And yet you thrive. I wonder if the demon world can benefit from such a seemingly ignorant agreement. Was he being serious right now? Why was he being stuck up? I crossed my arms, glaring harder at him. Why does it matter to you what the human world does? You're a demon. Things we do there don't affect anything here. Ah, but that is where you are mistaken. The man walked around the table to gesture to the books and maps that had covered its surface. When fighting a war, you need to look at all of the details to try and find the most efficient ways to bring your enemy down. When resolving it, you must be able to not only bring peace, but you must also know how to manage the land you have conquered in the aftermath. I looked to the map to see multiple routes and ideas plastered over the parchment. Was he seriously doing this much research for this war? However, the man simply crossed his arms. Unfortunately, I suppose that research on the human world would be for naught. We are two different worlds, after all. Yours is built on steel and electricity, while our world is flooded with magic and stone. At least I knew I know something new now. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Was he even talking to me at this rate? Uh, no. The man smirked at the agitated look on my face and chuckled. What's so funny? I guess it's also true that humans are easily angered. Your expression gives you away so easily. I growled before turning on my heel and leaving the library. Rude ass. <laughs> I was better off in my room. I remained in my room until the night came. I was given food which looked like soup. The woman who gave it to me apologized, letting me know that food was scarce until the upcoming harvest, which was a couple of days away. Being that I was only staying the day, I didn't mind much. I was more concerned over what I was given to eat. It was some sort of stew with mysterious chunks swimming in its broth. It smelled surprisingly good, but who knew how it tasted? Refuse it, I guess. No. No way. No how. I was not in the mood to try out new things after what I had been through, and this was not something I wanted to try at all. A knock rapped on my door, breaking me out of my train of thought. 
Huh? Come in. The door opened to reveal Diana with a plate holding things I recognized. Bread and cheese. I let out a heavy sigh of relief before Diana laughed. I suggest not trying that. As good as it smells, the taste would not sit well with you. Instantly, I moved the bolt to the nearby table, thankful that I did not have to try it. Diana handed me the plate and nodded, reassuring me that what was on it was indeed what it seemed. It's not much, but it's human food. Eat up. I will. I began to chow down, feeling the hunger in my stomach dissipate with each bite and swallow. The food I was eating, surprisingly, was delicious. As I began to crave something to drink, Diana chuckled and formed a small goblet in her hand, filled with the clear liquid that I assumed was water. I just realized something. Since time is different in the demon world than it is in the human world, how long have I actually been in that demon world? Like, I mean, in the previous one, like, it didn't seem that long, but it could have been, like, a month for all I knew. But yeah. When I came searching. I took it and drank it down, down, feeling my thirst quenched before I let out a sigh. Ah, uh, I feel so much better. I can tell. Take a moment to finish eating, then we'll head for the ritual. I looked up at Diana, suddenly excited. Everything was prepared for? Was it possible to go home now? As she read my mind, she smiled and nodded. We finished the main preparations. We just need to head over and we'll start. Yay. I couldn't continue eating. My mind went into an obsessive frenzy of wanting to go home. I stood up, moving the plate and gulped it to the nearby table. Let's go. Huh? Are you sure? I nodded, not wanting to waste any more time. I needed to get home, and I was tired of waiting. Diana stared before us nodding and heading for the door, opening it for me and exiting after me. As she closed the door behind me, I began to feel my heart flutter in relieved joy. I was heading home. Diana led me down the corridor of the war room, where I had originally arrived, to reveal a table covered in plants and artifacts of different kinds. None of it made sense to me, but I had only assumed that it was for what was needed for the spell to work. Diana walked to the table and looked and took note of what she saw, nodding. This should work. You're in doubt? Have to be after the last time we tried sending her home. Do we have a human anchor? No. You're on your own this time. But we'll make sure you survive casting it. This spell should work, however, because we'll be using energy material. It will only require a slice of your energy on top of these items, which your guard can refill immediately after this. Just make sure you don't die casting it. Diana smiled at her guard before turning to me. So, are you ready to return home? She didn't have to ask. I'm ready. Diana nodded once more before turning back to the table. She lifted her arms over the surface and lowered her head, muttering under her breath. As she spoke, the table began to glow as she did. A dark purple aura began to surround her form as she lifted and arched her head back, staring at the ceiling. A glimpse at her eyes made me gasp. Warm, golden orbs covered her blood-red irises, glowing with magic. She was deep within the spell and I could see it slowly draw energy from her body. The items on the table began to gleam wildly, light orbs floating from them and dancing in the air above the table's surface. They began to weave back and forth with each other, almost as if the lights were dancing to a silent tune. The other demon stepped back as Diana moved her arms up and pointed to the dancing lights. Her finger pointed into the air, leading the lights to follow where it directed obediently. She drew a large circle in the air and the lights followed like a perfect trail spreading out and forming a large void in the air. As they finally stopped moving, they burst into a bright light, causing the demons and I to cover our eyes from it. I engulfed the room, but died down as, just as fast, revealing a small tear in the air. Diana quickly leaned forward and dug her hands into it before pulling the tear apart, revealing my bedroom. Diana continued to pull the tear apart, giving enough space for me to jump through. Hurry and go through! This is your chance! I wasn't going to let it go to waste. I grew up the bottom of my dress and rushed forward, using the momentum to jump into the air and forward towards the void. I could almost reach it. I could feel the air conditioning in my room right at my fingertips. I was... She will never leave this world alive! 
The demon lord's voice rang through the air just as I saw my fingertips pass through the tear. What stopped the rest of my body was a red light and force forcing me and Diana back from the opening. Gah! Ah! Gah! Ah! I felt my body fly backwards and slam into the wall before I landed on the stone ground. I heard Diana's well land beside me with a painful blood. I looked up and felt my heart break as the tear began wrapped, became wrapped in red lightning, zipping itself closed and vanishing into thin air. No, no, this could not be. Damn it! That should have worked. How could it have failed? We must have missed something. Was there anything we had forgotten? Hmm. No, I verified everything myself. Hmm. Then why was the Demon Lord able to overpower a gate spell? I highly doubt you know either, brute. Stop fighting! We need to make a plan and all of you are just being stupid! Stupid, 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 stupid! Are you alright, Isaiah? Uh, I'm fine. It is... I was too lost in my mind to fully understand what was going on around me. I was so close. I felt the other side. I had almost made it home. Why couldn't I go home? Diana's grunt of pain next to me made me shoot my head towards her, and I watched her slowly push herself off to the ground, off of the ground and glare at the table. The Demon Lord must have done something more than simply bring her here. What could he have done? Now, the Demon Lord is incapable of doing anything of the sort. His lackey imps must have done something to her. A spell? A curse. Uh, I'll be right back. Let me see. <clears throat> a curse. I look to. S Ooh, I forgot I'm not wearing my headphones. <laughs> I look to the rabbit woman, seeing her stare wide at me. The other demon stared at me as well, and suddenly I felt like I was on display. Was something wrong with me? She will not leave the demon world alive. He must have placed some sort of curse on her to prevent her from leaving this plane. In order to leave, she'd have to die. <sighs> what? My mind went blank. Did the demon lord really curse me? Was I forced to stay in this world until I died? I could never go back? Are you suggesting a barrier curse? That would explain the red energy that sealed the tear. But dark magic like that requires the blood of a thousand demons. He must have sacrificed part of his army to cast a curse on her that would prevent her from leaving. <clears throat> the demon lord is that desperate for her. The only way to break that kind of curse is to kill the caster, the demon lord himself. She's trapped here, until this war is over. My body began to shiver violently. The demon lord killed a thousand demons just to trap me here. Why? Why? I slammed my fist into the ground and began to scream. I want to go home. Why? I could feel the symphony anger in the room, but I didn't care. I was beyond livid. I was far past broken. I was seeing red. Ah, I can't scream. Ah. As my voice ripped through the air, a bright light erupted through the room once again. Everyone covered their eyes, but Diana quickly scrambled to get on her knees and covered me with her body. She held me tightly as the light invaded the space and slowly began to fade. As the light finally died, everyone moved their hands to see what had happened. In the air was a white tear that was slowly opening, facing down towards the table. Something was coming. I could feel it in the air. The guard summoned his spear and pointed it at the tear, glaring at it and gritted his teeth. Something's coming! In reply, Diana summoned what would look like a saber and placed it in front of us. Eh. Ready yourselves! It could be the Demon Lord! The other demons in the room readied themselves and stared at the tear, either holding a weapon or repairing a spell. I felt the air change, becoming heavier as the tear began to grow. The energy around it began to pulsate, making everyone in the room that much more tense. I stared at the terror as well, frightened as what was coming. 
Was it the demon lord? His minions? My mind began to cycle through fearful ideas of what was about to appear. <laughs> My heart almost stopped. Fallen from the tear and landing on the table were the five Incubi brothers. They were piled on top of another, one another, having come through at one at a time. However, as the last brother landed, the boys fell to one side, toppling off the table and landing on the floor. <laughs> Thus, the rebels around me stared at the fallen pile of Incubi, confused and surprised. As the terror in the air closed, the ogre man was the first to lower his sword. What the hell? Who are they? Careful! They could be the Demon Lord's men! No! The rebels looked at me, and as I stood up, Diana following and still protecting me as I stared at the boys on the ground. They all looked dazed and a bit shell-shocked from having fallen twice in rapid succession. I almost couldn't believe it. They were there, right in front of me. My mind couldn't help but remember how I had first met them. They had all been on the floor of my mansion, unconscious and wounded. Now they were in front of me in the demon world. I know them. I stared at the one I was meant to marry, seeing him slowly shake his head and rise from the ground. They came to rescue me. He came to rescue me. My heart became overjoyed and full of warmth and happiness. I was going to go home. The question was, how? <laughs> That's enough for you, human! Oh, you gonna Ow. cry? Suck it up! <laughs> See you in the full game! <laughs> It's still not going to show up, but I can only hope. Oh. I mean, the music's nice. Um, I guess that concludes James's route. I'm still pretty. I'll, I'll, I'll be quiet. I'm just gonna eat my cookies. That concludes, um, James's route. I was gonna say, pretty sure that lady who was talking in the middle was James's mom. Was talking to some angel, trying to separate us, and wants him to be the ruler and overthrow the demon lord, even though he's already kind of overthrown now. But that's just my prediction. And so we will be moving on to, I think it was, I think it was Eric. Yeah, I think it was Eric. What was it, Sam? Hmm. Pretty sure I, pretty sure, pretty sure I did Matthew last, I think. Um, I'll figure it out. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!